This is a question from somebody else. Mm -hmm. I feel blocked. Is it terror blocking me? Is it a matter of time? If I keep on feeling anxiety and fear, more anxiety and fear, will tears finally come? Mm. Well, let's look at this matter of time thing first, shall we? Because yeah. uh, we need to dissect this question a little. No, it's not a matter of time. It's a matter of will. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, we, we often hear people saying, oh, it's just time, extra time, I need more time, and eventually it will come. No, it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of your will, how you exercise your will. That determines what happens here. Yeah. And while you may need time to develop your will, mm -hmm. which is definitely true, you don't need to wait to some mysterious and magical moment, <laughs> which will never occur actually, yeah. for you to feel into your emotions. Yeah. And the tears will not finally come if you believe it's just a matter of time. What will happen is many years will pass and eventually you will pass mm. <laughs> and you'll still be waiting for the time for you to feel your emotions. So my suggestion is to not do that. For a person who's struggling to feel their emotions, particularly if they know grief is, a, is there or any other emotion is there, the better course of action is to acknowledge that they do not wish to feel it and to be honest with themselves that they are allowed to not to wish not. to feel it. Yeah. They're allowed to take that opportunity that God's given them through the free will, the gift of free will, to not feel the emotion. They would also, if they were honest with themselves, acknowledge that that's probably going to cause some problems in their future if they still retain that viewpoint. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do they really have a desire to feel? Now, most people, if they're honest with themselves, would have to, I would suggest, they would have to see eventually that they probably don't have strong desire to feel. The, the tears themselves, which are going to be painful, or the fears that cover their tears, mm -hmm. the different things they are terrified of uh, about feeling emotion. And, and we have to develop our will somehow to get out of suppression resistance to dealing with emotion itself. So I would suggest to any person who feels blocked that you have a large suppression of, the de of a desire to deal with any emotion. And my suggestion to you first would to be to feel about your emotional belief systems around why you believe suppression and resistance should be your cause of action. Mm. And many times you will feel large amounts of anger and rage when you go through these kind of emotions. Anger with God, anger with you know, how God designed you and all these kind of things. And eventually you'll get to a point of surrendering to the fact that God designed you this way. Yeah. Now, once you get to the point of surrendering to that, you now have the opportunity to examine the individual points of why you suppress and why you resist your emotion. Because that is the causes of blockages to all of your emotions that are causal. Mm -hmm. And so the next layer then becomes examining your addictions. So you need to now say to yourself, okay, I am a master at blocking my emotions, so I must have a lot of addictions in play that help me keep my emotions suppressed. Yep. And now it's a matter of seeing those addictions in your day-to-day -day life and wanting to become aware of them. And again, that is an exercise of your will. will. <laughs> so while you resist seeing your addictions, you will never feel your emotions. And you need to see that. There is a direct correlation between you wanting to retain your addictions and your inability to feel emotion. Because addictions are all about suppressing emotions and getting emotions that help you suppress other emotions. So you need to be honest about your addictions. So this requires self-analysis, self, some kind of self-awareness. And though, so that now is an exercise, again, of the will to go into this age of wanting to see your addictions. Mm. Now, once you've exercised your will and wanting to see your addictions, you'll probably end up with a very long list <laughs> <laughs> of all of your addictions. And physical pain in your body is an indication of all of your addictions. 
are all the areas where you're suppressing the emotion associated with, with, the, with causal emotion. So, so now you've gone through your addictions, you're looking at your addictions, and you become aware through the process of face, focusing and feeling the addictions. Remember, this is a feeling process, mm -hmm. not an intellectual one. Mm -hmm. You need to feel every addiction that you have. Every desire you have to suppress something has to be felt, right? And then the reason for such a desire to suppress will be felt. Mm. Once you do that, you will start getting into this state of feeling some of the fears mm. associated with your addictions. Every fear you suppress creates an addiction. So every time you try to get away with feeling something because you're afraid, you will create an addiction to help you suppress the emotion that you need to feel. So then you start feeling your fears. And fears are all sets of emotional beliefs, all created usually between the age of, uh, of, of our, our um, conception, conception and seven years of age. Usually they, all of our fears, emotional fears, are firmly entrenched by the age of seven. And we are going to need to go back in our memory, this will help us, to access events in our life that caused us to believe that suppression is the way of life mm -hmm. and resistance to feeling emotion is the way that we need to live. And we need to feel them. We'll need to feel those events. So we need to remember the events and allow ourselves to feel them. Now, obviously, this is going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take time as well in the sense that we're going to have to give it time. See, most people don't give it time. Yeah. What they do is they go, oh, I've, I, uh, you know, I've got this and I've got that and I've got this, but they still work 40 hours a week. They still, like, the rest of the time go out and play soccer, do this, do that, watch telly, do all these other things, you know, mobile phone, TV, videos, <laughs> uh, all these different things. And in the end, they left over one hour a week for themselves to, to examine themselves. Now, I suggest to you, if you do one, this one hour a week, yeah, you're going to feel... Like 10 years later, you're still going to feel you'll not have accomplished much. Yeah. Because it takes a lot of emotional focus to actually allow yourself to become conscious of what's really going on within you mm. with regard to your emotions. And if you ever want to be at one with God, you have to do it. Yeah. You have to do it to become at one with God. You don't have to do it to have a semblance of a life, but you also need to do it if you ever want to have a purely happy life. You're going to have to do it at some point. And what we find most people do at that stage, they go, I don't want to do it now. I haven't got the time to do it now. But to be frank, you make the time to do it now because it's the most important thing. Because if you don't do it now, every aspect of your life is going to be the result of the suppression. Everything you do is going to be a complete result of what you're suppressing. Yeah. So I'd suggest to people, look, stop thinking that suppression is your answer, because it is not. It is not the way to happiness. You are never going to get complete happiness using suppression. What you're going to need to do is go through this gradual process, which is going to require an extreme exercise of your willpower to get down to the facts of your life. Mm. And you are going to need to do this. With God's help and the help of your guides, you are going to need to do this for yourself and you are going to have to develop a desire for yourself to do it. Yeah. No one else can, is responsible. There are people that can help you, but none of the people who can really help you will ever take responsibility for you to do it, for, mm. for, for, off of you to do it. And also, if they feel that you're not responsible, they won't help you. Yeah. <laughs> if they truly love you, they want you to see your personal responsibility to do it first. Now that means taking action of all kinds, talking about your feelings and emotions, talking about your childhood, but also um, uh, writing about it, reflecting upon it, spending this personal time so that you eventually get access to these emotions that you're suppressing and blocking. Yeah. So this is the process that I suggest to anybody who's blocked. These are the actions you're going to have to take. If yeah you ever want to get beyond your blockages. And it is not a matter of time. It is a matter of how much you use your will 
and how much you're willing to spend time doing that. <laughs> it's not just a matter of time magically that these things will occur. These things will only occur if you have a very definite exercise of your will in that direction. Mm. The only way I have ever personally progressed is by an extreme exercise of my own will. Yeah, yeah. Mm. If we go back to the question perhaps, mm -hmm. um, because and it's hard to know because these questions have come to us from all over, over a long period of time. So it's hard to know exactly what this person is meaning because it does contradict itself a little bit. Sure, sure. So if we go back over it. Yes. The first <laughs> statement is, I feel blocked. Yes. And then the next statement or the next question is, is it terror blocking me? Yes. And you've just gone... It's a whole series of things blocking her. Yeah, you've gone yeah. through this... Um, blocked is the final state. And backwards from that state are, is belief systems, suppression, and terror, yeah. fear. But, but before fear, addictions. Yes. You know, so back, if we go backwards, there's, there's the block state, the result. And if we go back, there's a whole series of things blocking you, not just terror. Yes, so it's, it's addictions simpl It's oversimplifying things to say it's just terror. Yes. And then, and then the question sort of changes a little and says, is it a matter of time? If I keep feeling anxiety and fear, more anxiety and fear, will tears finally come? And you've said it's definitely not about time, it's about will. Yes. But then... The, but then there's the second half of the question. It's hard to know, is, is, are they saying, are they... It contradicts itself. If we're blocked, we're not feeling anxiety and fear for a <laughs> Probably start. Probably not. No. However, see, most people believe they're feeling anxiety and fear when all they're doing is living in anxiety yes. and fear. Yeah. And I'd suggest that this person is living in, in an anxiety and fear rather than feeling anxiety and fear. When you feel anxiety and fear as a causal emotion, it dissipates, it goes away. If you're living in anxiety and fear, it's with you every day. It, seems it never to go goes on away. On. It goes on and on and on. And, if, and I, so I would suggest this lady, is, I think it's a lady, is not feeling her anxiety and fear. She is living in her anxiety and fear. And right. that's really important, isn't it, for yes. people to come to understand this difference between living in an emotion, which is basically having a sensation of the emotion and then acting in every way to prevent that emotion overwhelming us. Correct. Which is very different from having a sensation of the emotion and allowing it to overwhelm us. And going through and the experience. going through it. Then exactly. we're feeling it. And in the first case, we're living in it. Correct. And so if we're feeling, oh, I'm anxious and afraid, I'm anxious and afraid, but we're always acting to allay that, yeah. um, then we can't really say we're feeling it. No. And we will feel blocked. Of course we'll be blocked. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we need to differentiate here, of yep. course, between the feeling of an emotion, which is actually a relieving process, mm -hmm. and the suppression of the feeling of the emotion and living in it instead, yep. which is the day-to-day -day living with the emotion. It's like day-to-day -day living with pain. It's yep. the same thing. It's caused by suppression of the emotion. It's caused by not feeling the emotion. So when we day-to-day -day live in fear and we day-to-day -day are anxious, we are not releasing the emotion. So we're not experiencing it. We are taking actions to try and alleviate it. We're taking addictive, we're doing addictive things in our day-to-day -day life to attempt to alleviate the experience of it. Now, any sadness that we feel in that state is only rebellion. Mm. It's a rebellion against having to feel the emotion. Yeah. All right. Right. So we have a cry that we have to, that we feel sad, that, that we feel anxious every day. But that's not feeling why we feel anxious every day. Mm -hmm. So it requires far more exercise of our willpower to get into why. Mm. And that requires far more self-analysis than just going, oh, I'm blocked, yeah. you know, uh, is it because I'm terrified? Yeah. You know, the reality is if you're truly analytical in terms of not analytical intellectually, but you're actually, you're desiring to know, by now a person who's blocked would know. Yeah. If they desired to know what was causing their blockages, yeah. they would know. Yeah. God answers the questions of sincere individuals. So every person who's sincerely asking a question, if the, if the question is, is it my terror that's causing my blockages? Uh, the, God would already be answering that question, yeah. right? And, and in most cases, it's not terror that's causing the blockages. It's addictions that are causing the blockages. And it's the terror or the lack of wanting to feel the terror 
that causes the addictions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so most of the time our blockages are directly caused by our desire to remain in addiction with the world. Yeah. 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 And this is something that many of us need to address. Mm. An important distinction to recognise that many of us f feel our experience of feeling emotions um, has just, for a lot of us, because we live in so much suppression, has really just been yeah. a, a weak sensation of that feeling. Correct. Uh, yeah. When actually, when we use our will in this way, we're going to feel things in a much more overwhelming and intense way. Exactly. Yeah. So what I would suggest to such a person, there's mm -hmm. quite a few videos we might suggest besides the human soul yep. frequently asked questions, is uh, to actually perhaps watch the videos that we did in the in the assistance group in the USA in 2013 where we talked about addictions yes. and how addictions cause us to suppress emotionally. Uh, it's great for them to watch that particular, those sections of videos. We're also starting, we started up this year a series of videos which we haven't completed yet all about emotions and the essential things that we need to understand about emotions mm -hmm. which we started down in Kentucky and New South Wales and that was in February of this year. So I would suggest the person finds those two sets of videos. Yes. Uh, there's quite a lot of material there. Yeah. And actually looks them through and sincerely asks themselves what do they think is the cause of their own blockages. Mm. Yeah. Great. We need to take responsibility for the fact that we create our own blockages. Yeah. And that this this beautiful thing that you said at the beginning that it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of will. will. And yep. a lot of us go on just waiting for things to get so bad that suddenly we deal or we have magical thinking that somehow it's going to magically pop out of us. Exactly. When really you're saying it's very much about how we exercise our will and coming to grips with that, that we're responsible for that yeah. is, a, is a big issue. Yes, most of us want a magical solution. We do. We, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, the majority of us want a magical solution. We don't want to have to exercise our will to feel an emotion in order to cure ourselves. We want Jesus to come along and cure us. <laughs> That's what we want. And it doesn't work that way. The very first thing I had to do myself in the first century is learn how to cure myself through this process of understanding my own soul and how God created it to function and then working through the layers of any resistance that I might have had to that functioning. And I had to get myself out of, through that state to actually understand and get into a state where God's love could throw f through me and then cure, help cure other people. Mm. But even then, I couldn't cure other people indiscriminately. I could only cure them if they had the same attitude of wanting to find the underlying reason for why they created the you know, what was the cause within them for their own illnesses and diseases. Mm -hmm. so, so you've got to be very careful with what you presume here. We, everybody seems to want a magical solution to addressing things like blockages and why they're, why they're emotionally blocked and so forth. But the real solution is being sincere and pure in your desire to come to God's love and therefore work through any resistance within you that causes you to be out of harmony with that. That is what is going to cure every problem. And if, if that's not happening, if you're blocked from that happening, it's because no sincere desire really exists yet. Yeah. And we need to understand that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And work through the reasons why no desire exists. Yeah. Work through, find the reason. Be sincere about that. Instead of just hoping that some magical solution with some magical answer and some magical person will come <laughs> along and do it all for you. Because that is not going to happen here or in the spirit world. Yeah. Now that you have many helpers, but all they can do is work with your desire. Mm -hmm. they, can work, they can only work with your will. Yeah. They can't force you into feeling some emotion that you don't want to feel. And God will not force you into feeling emotion you do not want to feel. And unless you're really ready to feel the emotion you don't want to feel, you're going to remain blocked. So somebody's going to have to exercise <laughs> their will here, and the only person who has control of your soul is you. Yeah. And so it's going to be your will that has to be exercised to change. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's such an important thing that God wants us to learn, and it's really about becoming the full expression of our personality, isn't it? Yes. Embracing our will and understanding it and using it and, yes. and coming to love that it is ours and yes. that we can make choices. And, yeah. and, and understanding that everything that is happening to me 
is the expression of my own will in some way. Yeah. I need to come and see, I need to go and see that and take responsibility for that rather than trying to think that somebody else will come along and rescue me from, from having to go through those particular things. The, there is no, it is not loving for someone to rescue you from what is your intention. You know, even if your intention is exercised in a direction that causes your own pain, mm -hmm. it's still not loving for someone to rescue you from that. It's loving for someone to try to assist you to see the need to change, but it's not loving for someone to come along and just change you without your will being involved. Yeah. So we all need to exercise our will more positively if we ever want to find our blockages and work through our emotions properly. And like I said, it's been, I've had to exercise an extreme amount of willpower to get to some of my emotions. And to be honest, I've yet to exercise <laughs> enough willpower to get to some of them. Yeah. And this is why I'm still not in that pure condition again. And, and so, you know, it does take a lot of effort, a lot of time and a lot of sincere desire to be developed before you can actually get to that state. Yeah, and I suppose I have the privilege of living with you and seeing how um, dedicated you are to that process. Mm -hmm. And I often um, feel that a lot of people have this expectation of you to be perfect as Jesus or that you're somehow special or it's somehow easier for you or um, that it's somehow the rules don't apply <laughs> or that it, just because you're Jesus, God loves you better and so it's easier. And, uh, and that's not the case at all. No. In fact, I face many more extreme emotions than the average person faces, along with 2,000 years of memory that I've got to process. And so it's often very, very difficult to go through different processes for me emotionally. But I exercise my will to do so. And that's what I see, that you take it seriously. You practice very firmly what you preach. Mm -hmm. You, If you are aware of something within yourself you don't make excuses for that you don't try to avoid that or if you do you're honest about that also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but certainly when there's issues affecting your love of others you take that extremely seriously mm. immediately and mm. um, even my love of environment and, and animals and birds and other creatures yeah I take very seriously yeah. yeah and so I I am witness to how much will is required and I'm still growing that desire to have my will developed that much that it becomes my number one priority in every moment yes. to grow in this way and yes. to honour the principles of how the soul functions really. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the way I see it for my personal life is that I feel the primary reason why I came here was to demonstrate from this condition of sin or the condition of emotional error, if we can call it that, condition of emotions out of harmony with love, mm. what I, w I wanted to demonstrate, how to get from that condition back into that one went with God. So I sort of see it almost as my work, if you like. <laughs> so, so it's my primary job. job. <laughs> um, not that I see it as such, but uh, it, it's sort of like, I do see it partly like that because it, it feels to me like, what's the point of coming here and going through this experience again um, and losing a lot of the things that I had before then to come here um, if I'm not going to come here for the purpose I came here. Yeah. And so I, I'm very focused on, no, this is something that the earth needs to know about. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it, it will solve so many of individuals and collectively, it will solve so much of the earth's problems if people understood how to do it and they need someone to show them how to do it. Um, so, so that's why I want to do it because yeah. I, that's one of the reasons, not the only, and it's not my primary reason, mm -hmm. but it's one of the reasons. Is a, as an act of love towards others to show them what to do. And what I'm suggesting to all of the people listening to this question is that you are going to have to develop an extreme amount of will to progress in the manner that I am trying to demonstrate to you if you want to progress in the world as it is today. Yeah. And in many years to come, that might not be the case. Yeah. You know, people, Lots of people might change and lots of people may be around you demonstrating how to change and it might be much easier, but at the moment... In 2014, there's going to be a, a large amount of your, uh, the exercise of your willpower to actually go through this process and you're going to need to give yourself time and love yourself through this process mm -hmm. if you're ever going to do it. But by doing that, that becomes a very beautiful part of your soul that you've developed mm -hmm. and <clears throat> that will developed under what are at times 
extreme duress, extreme shall we call it? <laughs> opposition. <laughs> that becomes, in a way, you are developing things that many people who've been in the spirit world a long time, um, in sometimes better conditions, if you like, have not developed it in the same way, have they? Correct. There is, there is just, I feel passionately about the beauty of developing one's will and one's faith on earth. On earth because it does you so well for the rest of your life. Yes. Um, yeah. We, yeah. we have experienced the joys of the 2,000 years that we had in the spirit world, primarily because of the exercise of our will on earth. Mm. And, and it, we had to do it under extreme conditions. And uh, when you have to do it under extreme conditions, you honour it. Yeah. And, and, un and unfortunately, there are many people on earth and in the spirit world that do not honour the exercise of their will, nor do they take responsibility for it. Mm. And that is one of the main problems that causes them to not progress. So, so these are some of the blockages, the resistances that people have towards progression. Yeah. And, and I feel that uh, you know, it's very important to understand that blockages are self-caused. Mm. They are not caused by your environment. And this is, this is where we need to take responsibility for all of the blockages that we have. It doesn't mean that we need to punish ourselves for them. <laughs> we just need to take responsibility for them. We need to see that it is the direct result of our own action yep. that blockages are occurring. And until we do, we won't take full responsibility for the changing of that block. Correct. So we'll wait for some magical cure. Exactly. The, mm. We feel that the fault is outside of ourselves and so the, you know, the alleviation of it is, yeah. should come from outside. And when we recognise that, no, this block is in me because of choices I'm making, I've chosen to be blocked on this issue, yeah. then we realise we can make a different choice, don't we? Exactly. Yeah. So it's such an essential thing. Yeah. And, and what I'd encourage people to do who feel blocked is to take more self-responsibility and take more action to helping their own soul unblock because they, in the end, are completely responsible for the development of their own soul. Mm. Other people can assist them and help them, but unless they are prepared to go through a process where they are willing to open up the reasons why they are suppressing, work through all of their addictions, work through all their fears and eventually get down to the grief that causes a lot of their suffering, they will not grow and they will not change, and they will always remain blocked. And it doesn't matter how much time you go <laughs> past, you can remain blocked for many thousands of years. And we have observed many people remain blocked for thousands of years. We have friends who were with us in the first century, in the first century life that we had, and they are still in the hells of the spirit world today because they chose to exercise their will in an unloving manner towards themselves and others and remain blocked to the truth. And so, you know, they, they, you can't say enough about <laughs> exercising your will in a different direction to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.